humanities teachers, as you now know, climate change is one of the most critical issues of our times, and its impacts are becoming inseparable from our day-to-day -day lives. It is critical that our students are, being, are made aware of this issue and that they understand this problem from different disciplinary perspectives. In this lecture, we show you humanities teachers how you can teach topics in your syllabus using climate related example to improve the understanding of climate change amongst your students. We present educational resources that bring climate studies into the mainstream undergraduate humanities curriculum. As teachers, these resources will allow you to teach topics in the humanities through the use of climate related examples and you do not have to deviate from your prescribed syllabus. This will lead to increased climate awareness amongst your students. Again, I reiterate, you can continue to teach topics in the humanities curriculum as per your syllabus. The use of climate related examples to do so will lead to greater climate change awareness amongst your students. Using the educational resources that we will show in this lecture, you can use digital pedagogy in your classroom and learn how to incorporate a multidisciplinary approach to teaching, specifically in this case, the sciences and the humanities. How do you introduce relevant topics, in this case, climate change, which is very critical in your discipline teaching? How do you effectively use technology in your classroom? And how do you enhance your student learning? So you can integrate climate science in the teaching of subjects in the humanities and use the educational resources that we will show you to teach topics such as climate change literature, this would be for an English major, climate fiction or cli-fi, climate and culture, gender and climate, climate change and human rights, climate refugees, climate change and children, historical climatology, the decline of civilizations due to climate change, such as that of the Roman Empire, post-colonial studies, ethics, the idea of the Anthropocene, climate change nonfiction, and many more topics. Let us take a look at a few lesson plans that you may be able to use in your classroom to teach topics as per your humanities curriculum through the use of a climate related example. Some of these include English for academic purposes such as note making and summary writing through the use of climate literature. Reading techniques through the study of a particular climate related reading. A look at a couple of poems by William Blake, The Chimney Sweeper and understanding what was going on in the industrial era for uh, carbon emissions and climate change. A lesson plan titled Climate Fiction, Hermy. As an undergraduate English literature teacher, you can use this climate fiction short story to teach your students about literary analysis of fiction through narrative strategies such as dialogue, chronology, descriptive richness as used in a short story, the use of figures of speech, and the development of the element of pathos. You will use resources such as videos and readings and discuss with your students how to enhance reading itself and understanding a story. Through the use of this lesson plan, you can also tell your students information about how to write better in a creative writing course and to help your students to connect personally with the story. The underlying thread in this whole lesson plan is climate change, its effects on marine biology with the example of a hermit crab and therefore the name of the story Hermie. If you are a teacher in English literature and teaching literary analysis, speculative fiction, climate fiction, narratology, narrative techniques, figures of speech, dialogues, chronology, descriptive richness, irony, personification, pathos, dystopia, and so on and so forth, we invite you to take a closer look at this particular lesson plan. This lesson plan contains some readings to first introduce a list of literary terms for your students. A short video about four minutes in length to explain what is the behavior of hermit crabs. A short story about the interactions between humans 
and hermit crab as an example of fiction in the genre of climate fiction. A classroom or a lab activity that you can now conduct through the use of the resources mentioned earlier on. Let us take a look at a step by step guide towards the use of this lesson plan in your English literature classroom or laboratory. Please feel free to modify this lesson plan according to your requirements. Start by introducing a bunch of literary terms to your students. These would include things such as first person narrator, irony, personification, speculative fiction, pathos, flashback, dystopia and a list or links are provided for you to use in your classroom. Then through a video which depicts a real world scenario, introduce an animal character for the fictional story. This is a fictional story about a hermit crab and will be read in the next part of the lesson plan. The video titled Crafty Hermit Crab Finds a New Home in a Food Tin has been produced by BBC Earth and can be used to introduce your students to what is the natural habitat behavior of a hermit crab and this is specifically in a region in Thailand. Emphasize to your students that the hermit crabs are dependent upon natural seashells and therefore a balanced ecosystem for their well-being. You can also stress to your students using this video how hermit crabs can or must adapt to a changed environment due to human intervention in these habitats. Thus, this tool lets you describe to your students a real world scenario for hermit crabs and will uh, make your students understand what the plight of hermit crabs are in the following fictional story that you will use in your literature class. This is a reading by Nathaniel Rich and is titled Hermy. Ask your students to read this reading carefully. Allow them to build their impressions of the story without your guidance initially. Let the indiv students individually grasp what are the nuances in the text and formulate their emotional responses as readers. Remind the students of the literary terms that were discussed before through tool 1 to equip them with a subconscious grid to describe the interpretation of the text. Now discuss the story. First ask your students to offer their first impressions of the story in brief. You can direct the discussion using the points mentioned below. These discussions can cover both close reading skills for which the students will refer to the text as well as broad overview skills thus enabling your students to get information from the text and to be able to infer and interpret findings. Use the following points to then enable a group discussion for the literary analysis of the story. First, the story has several instances of irony. For example, the term calm blue ocean is ironical due to the disturbed nature of existence of the ocean's creature as described in the story. Mention other instances of irony that might have caught the student's attention. What is the narrator's profession? Pick out all the instances where all this is alluded to. The story hints are several ways that human beings have intervened and spoiled the environment. What instances can you find in the story? And so on and so forth. Questions and assignments that you can ask your students through the use of this lesson plan. Use the first question to ask students to summarize the human-animal relationship as outlined in the story and techniques of flashback to reflect on his or her life. Use the second question to reflect upon the story and get a creative response to how the story could have ended. Explain to the students that they are expected to write in the style and the vocabulary of the story, retaining the voice of the first person narrator. Use the final question for a comparative analysis of work of fiction and non-fiction. Allow the students to watch the video again and focus on the effects of human activity and climate change in the habitat of hermit crabs. Learning Outcomes 
Through the use of this lesson plan, your students will be able to 1. Critically read and analyze a short story. 2. Detect the use of irony, personification, analepsis and pathos in an example of fiction. 3. Analyze the primary features of a dystopian literature. 4. Apply the use of irony and analepsis as a narrative strategy for fiction. 5. Discuss the interaction between human beings and animals in a fictional story. 6. Understand the effects of climate change and human intervention on other life forms. And finally, use group discussions and creative writing as extensions of reading. If you or your students would like to explore this topic in greater detail, some additional resources are provided here with their links. A lesson plan titled Reading Techniques, a Study of Geology of Mankind. As an English teacher, you can use this lesson plan to help you in teaching reading and analysis skills as part of your English language teaching. The lesson plan involves training students in skills such as skimming and close reading and comprehensions based on the reading. The article used for this study is from Nobel laureate Paul Crutzen's Geology of Mankind that first describes the concept of the Anthropocene. For your knowledge, the Anthropocene is a new term proposed in 2000 by Crutzen. It defines the Earth's most recent geologic time period, the Anthropocene, as being human influenced or anthropogenic and is based on overwhelming global evidence that atmospheric, geologic, hydrologic, biosphere and other system processes are now being altered by humans. If you are a teacher and you are teaching topics such as reading, comprehension, scanning, skimming, close reading, different methods of reading, vocabulary, inferences, summarizing or reading of non-fiction, we invite you to take a closer look at this lesson plan. This lesson plan includes a text to introduce and explaining and explain various reading techniques such as skimming or close reading. Another reading which is the basis of this lesson plan is titled Geology of Mankind by Paul Crutzen that describes the concept of Anthropocene. This is the text that your students will be reading. And a short classroom lab activity to be better engage with your students to test their understanding of the text followed by analysis of answers through review. Here is a step-by-step -step guide towards using this lesson plan in your classroom. Please feel free to modify this as per your requirements. First, Introduction to Reading Techniques. Use the text titled Reading Strategies, Skimming versus Close Reading that is posted by Grad Pro Skills from Concordia University to introduce your students to the techniques of skimming and close reading. Explain to your students the, the difference between scanning and skimming. Discuss the points to consider for skimming articles of diverse types such as scientific papers, essays in the humanities and so on and so forth. Explain to them how and when the technique of close reading is employed. Now, Skimming of the article, which should take about 6 to 10 minutes or so. Remind your students of the technique of skimming, where the reader rapidly runs their eye through the passage without looking for any specific information. Explain that the aim of skimming is to gather the basic idea of what the text might be dealing with. Then, hand out copies electronically provided in this lesson plan titled, Geology of Mankind to the class. Ask them to look at it and then now instruct your students to skim the article. You can give your students a short period of time, maybe two minutes to skim over this article. Keep time limited is important so that the students will only skim and not close read at this point. You can ask your students to mention without looking at the text whatever information they may have gathered from this initial skimming. Ask them for keywords that they may have noticed, which we have provided in this lesson plan. At this point, the idea is not to indicate to them if they have understood the article 
and its argument correctly. It is simply to collate the bare minimum information that they have gathered through a skimming process. Now, close reading and a discussion. Now, ask your students to return to the article and to carefully read it. Instruct them to note their ideas about the main argument of the article and what is the proof that is provided for the same. Ask them to underline or highlight the main points in the text. Give them about 10 minutes to do so. Once the reading is done, you can direct a discussion around the following broad points. What is the writer's main argument? What examples of the argument are found in the text? What is the chronology of the Anthropocene according to the author? Now, a optional classroom activity that you can conduct. A questionnaire is provided here in this lesson plan and use copies of this questionnaire to test your student's understanding of the text. The questions are aimed at the details in the article and to test their close reading skills. The key to the questionnaire for your reference as a teacher is provided here. There are some questions or assignments that you can give your students with this lesson plan. For evaluation, you can ask them questions such as, what does Krutsen mean by the Anthropocene? What is its significance? What evidence does the writer have to show mankind's huge influence on nature? Do you agree with him that an environmental catastrophe may be imminent in the future? You can also give them some homework questions such as summarize the main points in the articles. The Anthropocene has called large scale changes in the animal world. Can you use the internet to find out what these changes have been? The learning outcomes. This lesson plan will enable your students to practice reading skills like skimming and close reading, discuss the differences in, the, in their own understanding on using each skill, and understand the concept of the Anthropocene. If you or your students would like to explore this topic in greater detail, some of these additional resources may be useful for you. A lesson plan titled, William Blake's Chimney Sweeper Poems, an Ode to the Industrial Age. As an English literature teacher, you can use two of William Blake's poems, both are titled The Chimney Sweeper, to teach your students how to interpret poetic texts. These poems may serve as an introduction to the genre of romantic poetry that first gained popularity during the Industrial Revolution. These poems emphasize what were the labor conditions during the Industrial Revolution in the UK and include references to the effects of coal burning that as we know is a primary cause for global warming. Thus, this lesson plan will allow you to integrate the teaching of a climate science topic with a topic in English literature about poetry. So, if you are teaching topics such as analysis of poetic texts, or romantic poetry or poems of William Blake, we invite you to take a closer look at this particular lesson plan. This lesson plan includes three very brief readings to introduce your students to what is romantic poetry by William Blake during the Industrial Revolution. A short reading which are of the poems, the reading of William Blake's The Chimney Sweeper for, and when my mother died, I was very young for critical analysis. So this is the first of two poems that your students can analyze. A second poem, which is the chimney sweeper, a little black thing among snow to analyze using a similar set of questions as we will ask in the first one. And a classroom activity to discuss what was the comparison between these two romantic poems and to understand how CO2 emissions from the pre-industrial era to today, where coal was being burnt extensively in England, has contributed to climate change. Here is a step-by-step -step guide that you can use in your classroom to teach topics in the humanities such as poetry. We have suggested these as a possible plan of action. Please feel free to customize it as per your requirement. Step 1. Introduce your topic and discuss some key terms. 
Before your students begin to analyze the two poems that are provided here, there are three key terms that they need to be made aware of. Using this resource, Industrial Revolution, introduce what are the features of the Industrial Revolution to your students with an emphasis on, on its origin in the UK. Explain to your students the primary features of Romantic imagination and the evolution of Romantic poetry. You can use Abraham's brief introduction to Romantic poetry, which is from a glossary of literary terms, which is provided in the link here. Also stress to your students how William Blake was one of the most prominent English poets of the Romantic age. The link that is provided here on William Blake by poets.org can help your students to understand more about his life and times. Now, hand out copies of William Blake's poem, The Chimney Sweeper, When My Mother Died When I Was Very Young. This was written in 1789. First instruct your students to read it themselves. You can have one of your students recite it in class to get a sense of rhyme and rhythm of the poem. And there are many questions that you can or discussion points that you can provide to your students to analyze this poem in greater detail. These are all listed here in this lesson plan. Things such as what is the rhyme scheme of the poem, the movement of the poem, who are, what are the characters of the narrator, what sensory effects and contrast does the poem create and so on and so forth. Now, the same instructions can be followed for analyzing poem number two and this poem is titled The Chimney Sweeper, A Little Black Thing Among the Snow. This was written in 1793. In addition to the discussion points that were mentioned in the first part, you can also ask them to notice that the king is also held culpable by the poet in this particular poem. The same sort of questions and a few new ones can be asked and discussed in your classroom. They are provided here. Now, you can have a classroom discussion to compare these two poems and to also discuss with your students what was the impact of the Industrial Revolution on climate. Once both these poems are discussed in detail, you can ask your students to compare the two poems. At this point, you can tell them that the first poem belongs to a set of poems called Songs of Innocence and the second to Songs of Experience. This is reflected in the change in the times and narratives of the two poems. Discuss what elements do they find in common and what might have changed between the poems. Having established all of this, you can now start to introduce a little bit more about a climate change discussion. In the poems, you can use the references to soot. Discuss with your students how large scale coal burning during the industrial revolution could have affected society at large. Explain to them that this was the beginning of the extensive use of coal for energy by humans. Further explain that coal burning has resulted in CO2 emissions that have significantly contributed to global warming, which is one of the drivers of current climate change. We provide to you a very simple and interactive slider called cumulative CO2 emissions 1751 from Our World in Data, which will enable your students to visualize a timeline of a country-wise CO2 emission since the pre-industrial age. You can use this to initiate a discussion on the contribution of England's industrial revolution to the emissions that are shown here. Some questions or assignments for your students. What are some of the features of romantic poetry? What differences do you see in the two poems of William Blake? Describe the state of child labor during the Industrial Revolution in the UK. Comment on the overlapping timelines of the Industrial Revolution and the period of Romanticism when these poems were written. What were the environmental effects of coal burning in England during the Industrial Revolution? The learning outcomes. This lesson plan will enable your students to Learn to critically analyze poetry, describe features of romantic poetry, understand William Blake's prominence as a romantic poet, discuss romanticism in England in the context of the Industrial Revolution, 
explain how orphaned children and the poor were exploited during this period and describe the detrimental environmental effects of coal burning during this industrial revolution that led to significant CO2 emissions contributing to climate change. If you or your students would like to explore this topic in more detail, some of these additional resources may be useful for you. See more lesson plans that integrate topics in the humanities with climate sciences at tropicsu.org. In this section, we show you some teaching tools that you as a humanities teacher may be able to use in your classroom. These tools will not only provide information about your discipline specific topic, but will also lead to enhanced understanding of climate change amongst your students. Some of these include a teaching module to learn about climate change science and climate change literature through the analysis and interpretation and through performing rhetorical analysis on climate change literature. A teaching module to learn about climate justice in the context of the world and specifically in British Columbia in Canada. A reading resource list to learn about what exists out there about climate change and the humanities. A short e-learning course talking about gender and climate change. A reading on human rights in the context of climate change which specifies on what are the effects of climate change on human rights, governmental responsibilities, actions, recommendations and policies. A video which talks about the connection between history, archaeology and climate through the understanding of relationship between climate change and historical change in medieval Europe. An e-learning course of saying how do you do visual storytelling through the use of climate change data. An audio podcast on a discussion of climate change and culture with writers and visual artists and many such other tools. Let us take a look at some of these lesson plans in some detail. The first one is a teaching module titled Cli-Fi which is climate fiction or talking about climate change literature. In this teaching module, you can use this in your classroom to, to have your students learn about climate change science and climate change literature through the analysis and interpretation of data and by performing rhetorical analysis of climate change literature. This has been produced by uh, and is hosted at the SERC which is Science Education Resource Center at Carleton College and I will tell you a little bit more about this tool. But from their description, this module can be designed to be completed either in an introductory natural science class where literature is not included or in a humanities class where often science is not addressed. This particular module contains different units. These include an overview of climate system, communication of the, about the climate through the science as well as literary representations how to read and analyze a short story and the literary representation of a very grand societal challenge, climate change. This tool has been developed by Jennifer Hanselman, Rick Oakes, Jennifer Slicko, Laura Wright from different universities in the US and is hosted at the Science Education Resource Center, SERC at Carleton College and is provided in the link shown here. A set of reading resources to learn more about climate change and the humanities. You might use these uh, resources shown here to have your students read in, uh, material about climate change and the humanities. This particular resource has been collated by Michael Swoboda and is hosted at the Yale Climate Connections website shown in the link here. Let us take a look at some of these readings. These would include Climate Change and the Humanities, A Cultural History of Climate Change or just Teaching Climate Change in the Humanities. About Cultural Studies and Criticisms such as Antarctica as Cultural crit Critique, Hyper Objects Facing Gaia, Film Studies and Criticisms such as Climate Trauma, Monstrous Nature, 
magical thinking, fantastic films and the in, in, illusions of neoliberalism. Literary criticism and theory titles such as eco sickness in contemporary US fiction, Anthropocene fictions and of course, the great derangement by Amitabh Ghosh. You might find some of these texts useful to use in your classroom and have your students read these. An audio podcast titled Imagining Climate Change. In this, there is a discussion on climate and culture with writers Amitav Ghosh, Lydia and visual artist Kambuli and in here and this is an audio conversation about how global warming is viewed from the perspectives of writers and artists. This has been developed by an audio program called To the Best of Our Knowledge and is hosted at the link that is shown here. You can have your students listen to this audio podcast and discuss with them when they come in. You can use the flipped classroom method of teaching in this particular case. A visualization where your students can make a story map to understand how climate change is causing environmental migration and introduce the term of climate refugees for them. In this tool, your students will learn how to make maps to learn about locations that are becoming uninhabitable and communities that are being forced to leave their homes because of climate change. You can ask your questions to uh, your students questions such as what are climate change related problems that threaten people in regions of the world and what challenges might be faced by climate refugees. This particular tool has been developed by ESRI story map team and is shown at the link provided here. So, dear humanities teachers, we invite you to take a closer look at these resources, these lesson plans and tools and we hope that you will use it in your classroom. The use of these tools and lesson plans will not only enhance the understanding of discipline specific topic for your students, but they will also become much more aware of the severe problem climate change and will potentially come up with solutions in their time.